Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Coal Iron YouTube channel. If we haven't been introduced yet, my name is Logan. I'm one of the newest additions to the development team here at Coal Iron and also one of the resident bladesmiths back here on the forge. Uh, in today's video, we have something super exciting to jump into and I'm really excited to share with you what has been going on in the world of Damascus this week. Um, Steve Schwarzer, who is a friend of the company and also a world-renowned master smith and a personal mentor for me, uh, has been teaching a class out in Colorado Springs at Kilroy's Workshop. And they have made an incredible discovery that is going to kind of change the game when it comes to doing powder canisters. And so we actually have a clip from them that they filmed at the end of their week out there kind of explaining what they've discovered and how it can be applied. And so we're gonna to cut to that real quick and then we'll circle back and get into our video today. Hello, I'm Steve Schwarzer. I'm out here at Kilroy's in, where is it? Colorado? Colorado. Colorado. Let's go here. The frozen wasteland. We're having a big time. We came out and I, te I came out to teach a powder metal class, canister class, and we've made a great breakthrough and we wanted to share it with you. And I wanted to introduce you to Ron Hardman. That's it. Ben? Last name, Ben. Say your name, Ben. Ben Bannister. And the unpronounceable one. <laughs> Jerry H. Frotland. All right. Now, well, what we did is we started off uh, shaping. Normally, I use like sheet uh, nickel and that sort of thing or paper to make shapes, and then we generate an image with it. And I was passing that information by to Ron, and you may want to explain a little bit about what we were doing and how oh, this yeah. kind of came. Well, Steve had actually talked to me before about uh, taking some uh, some white glue, like Elmer's glue with nickel and actually painting that on for a barrier. And so when we were talking about 3D printing, I thought, you know what, if it's organic, it's actually just gonna carbon, turn to carbon, and it's gonna get diffused into the metal on that too. So maybe we could create a form. So I went over to Ben and I said, hey Ben, what do you know about uh, getting uh, something that's just gonna break down, something that's organic, like wood filler or something like that? And then he went, all filament, PLA filament that's pretty standard for most 3D printers are actually mostly organic. Uh, they're mostly cornstarch and so when we had that epiphany we started kind of brainstorming well if it's mostly carbon and it should migrate once the steel gets hot enough and kind of melt away any of the coloring to the filament will burn out and then the rest of it will stay in. It should hold form and not cause any delaminations. Well, what is the idea for the first uh, lettering? Let me see if I can shoot this to you. I don't know whether you can see that close enough or not. Let me run around here and uh, do this. But you can see that. That was the first piece done with that printer. And it was done by... Terry H. Frotland. All right. She can see it. I can't. So you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Curie. That Curie. Uh, you can hear me, but you can't see me. But I'm back now. Curie did the first piece of this welded, and I wanted that historically documented. Big deal. Yep. Check that out. All right. That so that's pretty cool. They started off. They printed a form like that. I don't know whether you can see that or not. Uh, we'll do it on this one as well. There's a shape and it's basically a cooker cutter that's uh printed and then that's packed with different uh powder composition and it was forge welded by the unpronounceable one <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're able to do any kind of shape this is a dragon that they printed for me that i failed miserably at but it this is a proof of concept and we wanted to document the first that was done here at kilroy it was done by these brilliant two mm -hmm. young people and I'm pretty excited. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, so that KW is Kilroy's workshop, and that's what Kyrie did first. But we did a bunch of other ones this week, too. Yeah, we did a lot of canisters. Uh, we had a guy do a Sasquatch. That turned out uh, really good. Right, and then uh, our slack line guy, what's his name? Yeah, so uh, uh, Jaden Siminski, he's uh, he does slack lining, forged and fire champ, actually, too. Right, he's, he's forged and fire champ. Yeah. So we what to start out is we were using the printed thing as a form to bend the nickel and then it evolved quickly into why do we need the nickel when we could make the shape out of this um uh, this natural material that actually uh, decomposes into carbon and is absorbed by the steel and uh the i i had experience with it because i'd used paper and tape and i discovered that the paper would go to carbon 
many years ago. And so I knew that the minute I heard it was organic, I got all fired up. And, <laughs> and then he did. It, it, he was very, he was very like excited about it. I wound up. Yeah. I couldn't sleep yeah. nights. And anyway, so it's the knowledge of this is out in the community, but I wanted everybody to know where it originated. It originated right here at Kilroy's with these two people. Mm -hmm. So nice. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, if you want to learn how to do this, come Kilroy's. There you go. And for enough money, I'll show you. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you very much. See you out. Right on. So in summary, Steve and his students have discovered that PLA plastic using a regular filament style 3D printer actually has pretty minimal consequences when you uh, include it in a can to help assist in forming up uh, your powdered layups inside of a can. So um, basically, they've been having great success out there this last week, but we also want to replicate it here in our shop, A, so we can get it on video, and B, just to kind of confirm that in our environment, it works as well. So we have a 3D print of a cool tessellating kind of geometric pattern that should be able to repeat pretty pretty well as we tile it out. And we're going to put that in a canister, fill it with uh, 1084 and uh, basically a powder that's 1084 with a little bit of nickel in it. It's 4600 KC powder. And so we're gonna dump those into the can, get it packed down nice and tight, get it all sealed up and throw it in the forge and get it to stick together and see where we end up. So this is definitely not a tutorial video. Uh, we are just kind of taking the knowledge that Steve and his students have generously shared with us and putting it to practice and trying to, to replicate the same results. So it's definitely still an experiment and we're excited to see where we end up. All right, so the billet has been in the forge for a super long time. It is up to temperature. We're gonna take it under the 25 ton with our controller uh, in spring return mode, maxed out on the height so we can end push that canister and just slowly start working it on all six sides and hopefully we can get it to condense. So uh, let's do this. That went well. All right, so in that last heat, unfortunately, when I made this can, because the 3D print was a little bit of a weird size, I decided to weld six plates together versus an actual piece of tube steel. And unfortunately, every single one of our welds pretty much failed and popped open. So uh, the good news is, is that the can, or the billet didn't stick to the inside of the can. The bad news is that uh, at least the outer portion of the billet didn't have a chance to fully solidify. We didn't get that 30 to 40% reduction that you need uh, with the powder to get it fully solid before the can split open. And I wasn't gonna put it back in the forge uh, with exposed powder. So basically, that kind of sucks because the material is not going to be super usable for a future project. However, we are going to take it into our grinding room and cut it off with a big cutoff saw and see if we got a little bit of that can in the middle to solidify and basically see if we can find any remnants of that 3D printer plastic and prove whether or not it's actually going to be a technique we can use in the future with maybe some better welding on the can uh, or if it was just a bad idea in the first place. So let's head into the grinding room, cut this thing open, and hope that not a bunch of powder spills happens. We 
definitely didn't get full solid fusion. But I'm fairly convinced that that's because I didn't have a chance to work to build it up before it fell apart. Uh, there is a lot of solid steel here, and there is next to no uh, evidence of the 3D printer plastic being there in the first place. Um, and I can see in the heat colors, though it's a little bit too hot right now to grind and polish and see if we can do a pattern reveal. We'll cut to that in the next clip, but uh, yeah, I think that it's pretty safe to say that that 3D printer plastic is nowhere to be found in this billet. And that opens the door to a ton of new techniques and applications and accessibility for doing some pretty intense mosaics in the future. So um, let's jump over uh, through the magic of video editing to what this looked like after coming out of some acid, and we'll see what we have to work with. All right, so uh, we got the billet polished at least as high as we were willing to go right now. Uh, I got a little bit of ferric here in a big cup because this is still a pretty big billet and we're going to drop it in there and it's still not gonna fit. All right, take two. I have an even bigger cup slash pan with some ferric in it. Now we're going to degrease this again. Three hours later. All right, so uh, we etched it a little bit and it's not showing a ton of color because honestly, we didn't get the belt fully welded. But if you look closely, uh, you can definitely see the pattern in there. And it's very close to what we had when we started. Um, obviously cracks and unwelded powder aside. So basically this failed successfully. <laughs> um, there's no remnants of the 3D printed uh, extrusion that we put in there to separate the powder and uh, had this can stayed together longer I think we would have been able to get it fully welded and actually have a usable piece of material so we're gonna keep playing with this and trying with this um, and hopefully be able to come out with some pretty cool patterns uh, very soon so stay tuned for that but until that that's kind of uh, all we have is a little bit of a short a short episode because we got cut off a little early but um, yeah that's where we ended up and so uh, stay tuned for more coming very soon. All right, so after kind of a long week of some sporadic forging sessions and filming sessions and a couple of failures and a couple of restacks, we're finally where we wanted to be. So uh, we did have one failure in one can, but that was not due to the plastic. It was due to some poor welding uh, on the actual canister itself. But this piece right here is where we've ended up. So I've cut our billet square in half so we can get a look at the kind of core of the, of the billet and not worry about any potential um, areas at the ends of the, of the bar where the powder might not have been packed tight enough. So this is where the good spot of the bar is gonna be. So that's where we cut it. We got it polished up to a ultra fine scotch bright finish. We're gonna head over here to the acid tank and take a peek at what we've got in terms of a pattern. Oh yeah, check that out. So there's a little bit of splotches right there because I think there was some oil on the surface of the steel, but uh, I mean, those shapes are dead nuts to what we had for our 3D print. All our points are still connected here. There's a, looks like a spot where as the plastic melted, the, the nickel powder might have deformed a little bit, but gosh, I mean, for how little time we spent laying up that canister, that pattern is unbelievable. As you guys saw, that was an an awesome success. The canister came out really nice. I think that uh, this is a very exciting new development and it o lowers the barrier to entry for this really complicated mosaic Damascus cans. I mean, it, it goes from spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars and you know months at a time working with an EDM company or a water jet company to have these elements cut to you know a sub thousand dollar printer can can help create some of these these elements that you need for uh, for your cans so super exciting development and i'm really excited to see kind of where the industry takes this um, there's still a lot of, of quirks to figure out with working with the plastic and and finding the right balance to to optimize that that workflow but gosh it's a, a super exciting development and we're stoked to see where it goes so we want to give a huge shout out to ben kyrie steve and ron down at kilroy's workshop at steve's class this last week Thank you guys so much for being so generous with this discovery and this information and helping us walk through some of the, uh, the setups for this. 
what an exciting discovery and we're super stoked to be um, a part of kind of getting the, the word out there. So stay tuned for future projects with this billet where we continue to develop the pattern and hopefully some of the guys here at Cole can turn it into something cool. But other than that, that's all we have for you guys today. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and drop a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for more content just like this. We'll see you guys on the next one.